Hi, welcome to Engineer's Mindset. Now, we have a problem on two dimensions, which says that we should find the resultant magnitude and direction of the resultant force of the three forces acting on the system shown. So we have this force, 10 newtons, 15 newtons, and 20 newtons force, all acting at an inclined at a certain angle. So let's solve this problem and see. We have a 10 newtons force inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. We have a 15 newtons force inclined at 60 degrees to the vertical. So there's 15 newtons. We have this force of 20 newtons inclined at 25 degrees. Now I told you this is a positive S component. When the component point in this direction is positive in the x direction positive s component this is negative s component this is positive y component and this negative y component you all know this now let us first of all start by filling all the angles in the quadrants if here is 30 degrees automatically it means that here is 60 degrees because angle on the quadrant is 90 degrees so if here is 30 that means here is 60. if here is 60 it also means that here is automatically about 30 degrees angle on the quadrant is 90 so if here is 60 it means here is 30. if here is 25 it means that here is what 65 65 degrees angle on the quadrant is 90 so from here to here is 65 degrees that's the first thing we have to establish now we're going to apply the shortcut to make it very swift and easy now let's find let's call this force f1 let's call this force f2 and let's call this force f3 so we'll start by what s component of force S component of force. This S component can also be called horizontal component of force, as told earlier. So F1 of X. So let's resolve F1 in the X. Like I told you, so we are going to apply the shortcut. We want to resolve F1 in the X. Hold the tip of the arrow of S1. Drag it till it meets the X line. This is the X line. If you pull it till it meets the S line, notice the direction of the arrow. This is the arrow pointing here. If you meet this S line, this arrow will still point in the direction, so it's positive. And again, it passes through what this angle. It went all the way from here to this point. So it passes through what 30 degrees. So it means it's F1 times cos 30. And F1 happens to be what 10. So this is now equal to 10 times cos 30. And this is equal to 10 times 0 0.860. 860 so it means this is actually 8.66 newtons so f1x is 8.66 newtons the next is f2x so hold the tip of the arrow of f2s this is the horizontal component on this is the x component hold the tip of the arrow drag it till it meets the s line if i pull this force till it meets the s line notice the direction of this force this force will point towards the left so that means it's a negative component of force in the x direction and again it passes through what this angle 30 degrees so it passes through 30 degrees so it means now that it points to the left so it's negative so you have minus 15 times since it passes through the angle 30 then it's going to be times cos 30 so this is equal to minus 15 times 0 0.8660 that's equal to so that's equal to minus 12.59 newtons and then finally for the third force f3 of x f3 of x resolve f3 in the x this is the arrow sign please stay, pay attention to the arrow always f3 of x is pointing inwards so hold the arrow push it till it meets the horizontal line this is x component so you pull it till it meets x component notice that if you pull this force limit x component this direction will also be pointing to the right now take note forces we don't pay attention to position of the force is always the direction of the arrow that we pay attention to. So this force could appear on negative uh, quadrant, but doesn't make it negative. If I pull this force to meet this line, the arrow points towards your right. Whenever the arrow points towards your right, it is pointing towards the positive component of the X. If it's only when the arrow points to the left that it's negative. So if I pull this force till it meets this line, first of all, I notice that it will pass through this angle 25 degrees and it will point towards the right, so it's going to be a positive force. So now this is equal to um 20 um 20 newtons times cos 25 cos because it passes through 25 degrees and it's positive because it's pointing towards the right so this equal to 20 times cos 25 so cos 25 is 0 0.9063 so this equal to times 20 okay so we have 18.13 
newtons so after getting all the horizontal components in the x what do you do you now sum them up so summation of x component of for summation of x component force so we'll call it summation f of x and that summation is simply what add all the values together we we'll have 8.66 the next is minus 12.659 so minus 12.59 plus next is plus 18.12 plus 18.1 18 so we have this now on getting this summation f of x is now equal to so when we evaluate this we have summation f of x will be 14.2 Newtons. We'll keep that aside. We'll now move to um, y component of force. So move to y component of force. If you do this, same thing, we'll start with F1, F1, Y. So if resolve F1 in the Y, hold the tip of the arrow, pull it till it meets the Y line, watch the direction of this arrow. If I pull this force to meet the Y line, it points upward, so it's positive. And again, it passes through this angle, 60 degrees. So it means it's going to be what? This force times the cosine of the angle it passes through. So that means F1Y is simply what? Force is 10 times cos 60. And this simply was 10 cos 60 0 0.5. And this simply 5 newtons. Next is F2Y. Force 2Y. So this is F2. Hold F2. Pull F2 till it meets the Y line. Also watch the direction of the arrow. If I pull F2 till it meets Y line, notice that this arrow will point upward, so it's positive. And again, it passes through this angle 60 degrees. So if it passes through 60, that means it's going to be multiplied by cosine of 60. All right, so we have um, 15 times cos 60, and this equal to 15 times 0 0.5. And 15 times 0 0.5 is 7.5 newtons. So we'll keep that aside finally f3 y also be very careful f3 y hold it and pull it till it meets the vertical line this is the vertical line for this quadrant if you pull it till it meets the vertical line also observe the direction of the arrow regardless of the position i've told you what to pay attention is the direction of the arrow if i pull this force till it meets the vertical line this arrow will still be pointing upward this is the arrow head pull it down to meet this line this arrow will still be pointing upwards so it's positive because it's pointing to the up not pointing downwards, so that means this force is positive. Then again, it passes through what this angle 65 degrees to get to the y line. Since it passes 65 degrees to get to the y line, it means we have to multiply by the cosine of 65. So F1 F3y becomes 20 times cos 65, and this equal to 20 times cos 65. Cos 65 is 0 0.4226. So this equal to so we have 8.45 okay after this what do we do summation of s component force summation of y component force so summation f of y add them together you have 5 plus 7.5 plus 8.45 okay this will give us this now implies that summation of f of y is now equal to so once we add this we'll have 20.95 newtons so we have 20.95 newtons in our summation f of y so after having this the question says we should find the magnitude of the resultant force and the direction so magnitude of resultant force resultant force magnitude we obtain from the previous video that our resultant force magnitude f of r is simply the square root of what summation f of x all squared plus summation f of y all squared so if you know this f r is equal to square root of summation f of x we obtained summation f of x to be 14.2 so this 14.2 square all over summation f of y was 20.95 20.95 square so f resultant 
is equal to the square root of let's get that value all right so 14.2 square will give us 20.164 plus 20.95 square will give us this 438.9 so we'll add them together we'll have square root of 469 so we'll take the square root of 469 we'll now obtain that resultant force magnitude is equal to the square root of 459 and that's 21.42 so we have 21.42 newtons that becomes the square root of so that becomes the magnitude of the resultant resultant force the next question says we should find the what direction of the resultant force and I told you in the previous view that direction simply means theta. Direction of resultant force simply means theta. And that is equal to the actan of summation f of y, summation f of x. Okay, so that simply implies that theta is equal to actan. So we got summation f of y as 20.95. So this is 20.95 all over summation f of x. We got that to be 14.2. Okay, all over 14.2. Okay, so we'll get the value. Okay, so that's theta is equal to tan inverse. This gives us 1.47. 1.4759 okay 1.4760 okay 1.4760 so what do we do now we we'll take the actan so actan and we'll get an expression for it that's about 55 degrees all right so taking the actan of this value gives us that theta is equal to 55.8 degrees so that's the direction of the resultant force now you could also be asked to find resultant force in vector form so in vector form resultant force i've told you that f resultant is simply what summation f of x i plus summation f of y j so all you need to do is simply what resultant force in vector is equal to summation f of x we got 14 point 0.2i plus 20.95j so this is the resonant force in vector form so that is that for that question i'll see you in the next video with another amazing two-dimensional problem question thank you don't forget to like share to your friends and comment if you have any question thank you very much